Hey everyone, Daniel from Voice Show here. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use this template that we've created. So my screen here, you can see the Voice Flow project. And then on my other tab I've got here, I've got our servo that we've set up. So on the Voice Flow project, you have two core flows. The first flow is to ask a question. And the second one is to load up a new website. In this first flow, what we're doing is that this first block is actually setting some variables that we're gonna go pass over to our server to start parsing our website. So the first one I've got here is where your endpoint is. So when you start a new server, you're actually gonna put the endpoint for the server here, which is quotations. The second one is just setting your voice flow API key. So you can find your API key here in the integration section. And if you click dialog API, uh, you can find the API key right here. So you can hit copy. So you're gonna to wanna to go and put that in a set step as well with terms of quotations. The third one is a target URL. So this is where you're gonna put in the website that you wanna start with. So for me, I wanna actually use the Airbnb S1. This is a really dense document and it talks all about the health of their business right before they do an IPO. I don't wanna read 300 pages, so I'm gonna use this in our demo. So I'm just gonna copy the link, go back to VoiceLow, and I'm gonna put the URL right within here. Oops, let's try that again. Great, so now we've got our URL within here. Then what's gonna happen is it's gonna to go to this component. And so component is like a shared folder. So you can see I've got it here and I can use it to my flow. And inside I've got an API call that's actually uh, sending the website to be parsed to our server. So if I open this up, you see I've got the endpoint here. So I'm using a variable for the endpoint slash API slash parser. I've got a header and then in the body, I've just got the URL and my voice API key. So now going back to the kind of home page here, those are kicking off the flow and it's going to load our website into our server to be parsed. After that, a user can ask a question. It's going to capture the question and send it over to our server. So it's just a different um, endpoint here, but it's the same format. And then it's going to return the answer and allow a user to either ask another question or add in a new website to try out. So we're going to go ahead and actually get this going. So on the side, and I've got this up on Replit here, uh, I'm going to go start off uh, and launch the server. So I'm going to go ngrok HTTP 3200. Um, so you can see that the port I'm using is this 3200 port. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want this endpoint. So let me go ahead and copy this. Oops. Awesome. And let's go ahead and add this to our project. So invoice flow for the endpoint, I'm going to go ahead and add in the URL here. So now back in our console, we're going to go ahead and start this off. So let's hit start. And you can see that it's now listening on port 3200. So let's go ahead back to our assistant and actually run it through over the test. So to start off, we're going to go hit play and we want to make sure that we train our assistant. This is going to make sure that all of our intents that we have on the canvas are up to date uh, and they're trained. And so if the user decides to free type, ask a question or try to navigate through it, um, it'll actually pay attention. So this usually takes maybe about 20 seconds or so, um, but let's wait till it finishes. Awesome. And it might take a little bit to start just because it's loading a number of steps in the background. Uh, but as soon as it kicks off, you're gonna start seeing it move through the canvas. So you can see that it actually went through our three set steps here. It went through our API call, and now it's saying we've loaded the web pages from this specific URL into the database. If I go check the database, I can see that a new folder has been created. Uh, that actually has the information from the source. So now I can start asking you questions. So I'll ask it something like, who is the CEO of Airbnb? And what it's doing is it's sending that to the API and responding back. So the CEO of Airbnb is Brian Chesky. I'm gonna say, how many shares does Brian Chesky own? Whoops, let's go ahead and make sure that name is right. And let's see what it comes up with. Cool, so Brian Chesky owns 7,000, 76,000 uh, shares of class B common stock and it's not on any A class A common stock. So this allows you to ask kind of any questions to the Airbnb S1, um, depending on what's in there. So I can go ahead and do something even more specific, like um, who are the directors of Airbnb? And as it responds, um, this really gives me a good sense of if my prompt is correct. And so I'm gonna say, uh, how much does uh, Ann Mather make. Cool. 
So to give you context. So you might get some answers like this, where if the uh, model isn't able to find specific information in the document, um, it's not going to try to make up any information, it'll respond back. But this will give you a really easy way to start actually combing through some of these big documents and optimizing it as we go. In this template that we've got, if you did want to change up the prompt of that uh, that, that your model is using to send to GPT, uh, if you scroll through it, you can see over here that we've got our template, which is dictating the prompt that we're sending over. So you are a kind of AI assistant. Try to answer the following question. question. If you don't know the answer, just say, hmm, I'm not sure. Don't try and make up an answer. So you can start modifying this prompt to really get more specific answers back from your AI assistant, whether you want them to have a persona, whether you want them to only use the information in the embedding, or whether you want them to kind of cater your prompts a bit more. But go ahead and test it out. It's super powerful once you set it up. Um, and let us know if any questions.